I made a video on Napoleon's Six Days campaign, which took place from February uh, 10th to the 15th in 1814. It's one of his, I would say, lesser known campaigns, uh, just because it occurred at the tail end of, of, his, of his career um, after he had suffered a, a few defeats. Uh, it's nothing like an Austerlitz, um, but it is Napoleon demonstrating some of his genius that led to his rise. And I thought that it was a very good um, campaign to cover if you enjoy military history or history in general. Uh, so without further ado, um, I'm Average Philosophy, and uh, I'm going to get into it here. All right. Nice. So um, on the cover of the PowerPoint, I have one of my favorite pictures, which is Napoleon. And you can see notably Ney behind him. And it's his marshals. Uh, I think Napoleon would not have achieved what he did without his great group of, of marshals and leaders. So I organized my PowerPoint in the following way. I might deviate from it a little bit, but in general, I talk about the core system, which Napoleon had implemented. Uh, it was not in widespread use before um, uh, the Napoleonic Wars. I talk about defeat in detail, um, which had been used prior to Napoleon, but Napoleon really uh, took it to a different level. I talk about Napoleon being on the ropes in 1814 uh, after the loss at the Battle of Leipzig. Um, he was being pursued by uh, massive armies um, that outnumbered him close to three to one, four to one. Um, then I discuss his six day campaign, uh, and his six day campaign is when he beats, uh, an army two times his size, the army of Silesia led by Blucher. Uh, he beats them, uh, four times in six days. He beats them at Champambert, uh, Montmirad, Chateau Thierry, uh, and Vauchamp. Uh, the way he was able to beat them consecutively, um, even though they were outnumbered two to one, shows um, showed his military brilliance uh, that led to his rise. Uh, and then after discussing all that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the aftermath of the battles and, and what happened afterwards. So... To understand Napoleon's success, you have to understand the changes he made when um, you know he ushered in the Napoleonic era. Before armies were you know one big lumbering beast, uh, you had a huge supply train. Um, all of your troops traveled together. You might separate them in, in certain situations. Um, but nothing like Napoleon's uh, core system that he implemented afterwards, where he had dozens of corps, uh, each operating it as his own army. So this would be like a traditional um, setup. Now, post-Napoleonic, you have the core system, which is literally keeping everything from a traditional army but making it making it smaller, more maneuverable um, for speed, for self-sustenance. Um, it also allowed um, Napoleon to keep his enemies guessing consistently on where the main attack would come. He'd spread out his cores wide, um, so you would not know where he would be attacking. It's also noteworthy to mention that Davu, with his corps, was able to beat the main uh, Prussian vanguard at, uh, at, at the Battle of Jena Auerstedt. And that's one of the great uh, depictions of the corps system, being able to, D Davu, outnumbered two to one, uh, was able to operate as an army on, on his own and, and, and beat back the Prussians. 
So defeat in detail. What's defeat in detail? Um, defeat in detail. Um, I'm going to just go through this briefly. It's um, splitting up your forces. It's a it's a method to neutralize your opponent's uh, numerical advantage. And what it does is it you force them to split up their forces because you're splitting up your forces. So if I'm if I have twelve thousand and I'm facing a force of twenty thousand, I'm gonna split up my forces in a way that I know he will have to split up his forces in order to make his numerical advantage um, as uh, minimal as possible. However, I still want to leave room to um, maybe do a hit and run attack on one of his um, 5,000 man cores with two of my 3,000 man cores. Um, Meaning that individually the opponent outnumbers me 5,000 to 3,000. However, if I attack him with two 3,000 core, two of the 3,000 core, then I outnumber him. So it's all about being strategic in how you employ your, your forces. So this was the tactic that Napoleon loved to use. Now, a little bit more explained, because uh, I think this is brilliant. Now, this, is, this looks like a bit of a mess, but I, in essence, took the same... Um, same same concept from the previous slide and put it here now what happened um if any of you've ever played total war that's a turn-based game meaning that you go and then the other player goes it's like chess you know you each go once so if we were to, to look at it through that perspective what happened was um I made a move. I made a move on his southern flank with my A two and B two. Now, what that what does that force him to do? It forces him to reinforce D with B and A. So now he has fifteen thousand troops tied up against my six thousand. He's going to win that battle. The goal, though, is to hold him up while C2 and D2 can beat his C. Um, and then once I'm able to achieve victory, then you know we, we disengage. But that is, that is how defeat in detail uh, kind of works. It, it, it's like a chess match on how to deploy your troops, where to, to deploy them, uh, how to deploy them. Um, so I always thought that it was a very, very clever maneuver by Napoleon to use defeat in detail. And it's also used by other generals as well. So before I get into the actual six days campaign, um, I mapped out, um, well, the, the, the map is a stock map, but I added in um, these blue dots that symbolize where the fighting took place. And most of it took place in between the River Marne, the River Marne, and the River Seine. So if you see within these two blue uh, areas. And so two main armies were approaching Paris. To the north, you had Blucher's army of Silesia marching um, along the Marne. On the south, you had Schwarzenberg's army of Bohemia um, proceeding along the Seine River. So I made all these images on uh, on Google, uh, but so bear with me. Um, so here's a first image. Um, this is the Marne River. Now the Six Day Campaign is where, as I mentioned. Napoleon beats Blucher's army of Silesia four times in six days. He was outnumbered 57,000 to 30,000. Now, this was a general setup. Um, Napoleon had force marched uh, his fourth corps and his old guard, which he was now using as almost his vanguard. Um, he force marched them to stop uh, Blucher's advance on Paris. Now, Napoleon, using, using his old um, 
tactics of brilliance employed defeat in detail to defeat uh, Blucher. Now, first, if you see here, he attacked uh, all Sufiev's uh, 3.7 thousand uh, force here in the center. So that was at Champombert. Uh, that was the first of four battles in the Six Day Campaign. Afterwards at Montmirail, um, Napoleon took on a much larger force, which was Austin Sacken's uh, Corps of 20,000. Nonetheless, he was able to, to achieve victory. At Chateau, at Chateau Thierry, he was able to beat York's forces and force uh, Blucher into uh, uh, retreating um, after he had seen half his army um, routed. And the coup de grace is um, Napoleon completely forcing Blucher to retreat. Um, once... Once Napoleon had, had won at, at uh, Champombert, at Chateau Thierry, um, and at Montmirail, uh, Blucher left as soon as possible. And Schwarzenberg was alarmed as well, so he retreated. Um, but what you see here is that in Napoleon's most desperate hour when they are miles from Paris, he force marches his army and defeats a force two times his size. And uh, with the stakes that high, I think that's very impressive. So aftermath, I just read a few points there. And six days, Napoleon had inflicted four defeats on the army of Silesia, completely halting its advance. Uh, it's also noteworthy to mention that after this, uh, you know, how many coalitions did it take? But they finally said, we're not engaging Napoleon anymore. And that's my brief presentation. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, I thought it was an interesting topic. Um, if you want to see any other videos, uh, please like and subscribe and, and comment in the comment section. Uh, thank you.